He's back as mayor of San Antonio after winning re-election over the weekend, so he is back here on our KSAT Q&A with us. Mayor Ron Nirenberg, thanks so much for being here. Congrats on the win, first of all, on Saturday. Uh, great to be back with you, Myra and Tim, and, and thank you very much. I'm very gratified by the, uh, the faith of the voters in me and, and get ready to get back to work. So Glad let's let's talk about your final term as mayor of this city. Top priority for you, something that you were looking at over the next couple of years to say, I want this to be accomplished when I walk out. Well, there's a lot of things, so it's hard to pick just one, but I'll, I'll tell you a few things that are high on the list. Number one, we want to make sure that we get this airport project off on the right foot. We have shovels in the ground next month, next year. Uh, and the new terminal should be online by 28. So the redevelopment of the San Antonio airport is is huge. We also have bona fide mass transit coming to San Antonio for the first time. Our north-south ART corridor is fully funded, and we are working to fill the gap and make the east-west corridor complete as well. So those will be underway. Of course, the work that goes on every single day just to make sure that families have opportunities, that there are good jobs being created, that work continues, and that the educational pathways to those good jobs are strong for every family in the city. Uh, a lot of work underway with public safety, obviously. We've got some uh, improvements uh, in the contingents within our San Antonio Police Department. Uh, a lot of work underway. So it's, it's hard in city government to to select just one thing, but I've got a lot of things on my plate and a lot of things on the list that we want to make sure we get done over the next couple of years. In the more near term, Mayor, this week we will see the expiration of Title 42, a lot of concern along the border on what that will look like as everyone is expecting a huge influx of migrants. What are we anticipating here in San Antonio? We've seen these other surges impact us. So what are we expecting this time around? Sure. And just to be clear, the lack of congressional action on immigration reform, comprehensive immigration reform of the last two plus decades has really created challenges all across our country in local communities as we deal with these migration flows. Unfortunately, uh, we have to deal with those impacts and we do that in a compassionate manner. So I'm very grateful. Uh, we've been working well with uh, Department of Homeland Security and Secretary Mayorkas. We have advanced funding uh, to make sure that our Migrant Resource Center treats people compassionately who are here legally seeking asylum and we get them on their way to their host families and, and awaiting their asylum hearings. But let me be very clear. Uh, we have to also minimize the impacts to our community. And that's what happens with the MRC. We do this in an organized manner, in a compassionate manner. Uh, and we are uh, working through this process and we will continue to do that uh, in cooperation with um, DHS and, and our federal partners. Have you been having any conversations with those at the Migrant Resource Center? I know the city's not in, in charge of running that anymore, but I know months ago, you know, we were seeing with a, a surge of people then it was at capacity. People were needing to find ways to, to move on to where they could get shelter. Anything right. that they're preparing for this time around? Yeah, it's a cooperative effort, and our <coughs> excuse me, our <coughs> our lead partner, Catholic Charities, has been doing a, a fantastic job. They're obviously working to make sure that they have capacity and they have funding to continue the operations and anticipate whatever surges there are. But we work in concert with them, and so as it relates to transportation, uh, we want to make sure that uh, folks are not uh, who have their travel uh, arranged are moving on their way uh, efficiently, effectively. We also make sure that those who don't have travel arrangements um, get those done. They should be done processed before they get to the MRC. And we're trying to get those that word out to our partners uh, in, in the network of Border Patrol and DHS along the border. So it is a cooperative effort. And what they're doing right now is just to make sure that they're moving through uh, folks effect effect effectively, efficiently, so that we don't have folks lingering and that bottles up capacity at the MRC. When it comes to the city budget, you guys are going to be starting to move into to that phase of uh, the year. What are we expecting as far as how the city budget looks this year? Well, there's a couple of big ticket items that we are looking at. Number one is that we are working through an analysis that we've done in cooperation with UTSA on the uh, police department and what resources they need to effectively do more proactive policing 
Uh, and, and so we are going to be adding a significant number of patrol officers this year, about 100 in the patrol division. So that's going to be a, a big part of the budget discussions. We're also going to be carrying for the uh, Animal Care Services Strategic Plan so we can begin to turn our, uh, our um, uh, dangerous dog policies uh, in, into implementation and that we can also bring down our euthanasia rates. So a lot of that work's going to going to happen uh, over the next several months. Of course, we're going into budget town halls as well. So if you have concerns, um, infrastructure or anything else related to the city budget, we want to hear your your thoughts on that. Uh, but I will tell you that we anticipate some city tax relief this year. Once again, uh, we will very likely be reducing the tax rate, and those discussions will start tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, that's something that everybody's going to want to pay close attention to what, you know, of course, what affects all the rates that we pay in this budget season as any kind of right. progress moves <clears throat> forward with the city business. The council itself is in a period of transition, right? There are new faces right. that you know you're going to be welcoming after the election. There are still some races that are undecided headed to runoff. So just from sort of a process standpoint, a behind the scenes look, I guess, how does the city yeah. business move forward in a time like that? Well, it moves forward very quickly. Obviously, we have a couple of council races that are still yet to be decided with runoffs in District 1 and District 7. Uh, but our new colleague, uh, Mark White, who is the councilman-elect for District 10, he's actually going to be going through some orientation as early as this week in anticipation of his term beginning on June 1st. So there's going to be some new faces on the dais, and, and that all will put them right into the vortex of our budget season. So there's a lot of ramping up to do. I will be looking at our council committee assignments and structure. Those are the things that typically happen in between terms during the summer. So I'll be working through that as well. Uh, but it's a it's an exciting time of renewal for uh, your city council and and uh, want folks to, to feel good about how we transition from election season into the new term. And, and, and all things point to it being a very productive couple of years for our city. Mayor, again, congrats on your final term, and thanks so much for being here with us this evening. Great to be back with you. Thanks, Myra. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. We'll be right back.